Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. And um, I thought I'd do an update on my Starlink setup. Um, so as you know, this was my previous Starlink setup, the Gen 2 dish. Been using this for about a year now, maybe just a little bit over. Yeah, I've gone through all the iterations of it, stripping it down, flat mounting it, having it sort of on the stand, everything. I've used the whole sort of like setup of it. And recently they brought out Gen 3. So, bye bye Gen 2 dish, hello Gen 3 dish. So the first thing to do is unbox it. Wow, okay then. That's quite neat. So it comes with the uh, usual thing, QR code to get the app, I've already got it. Uh, explains about how the stand works, how to connect everything up. Um, and then talks about the angle and trees and things like that, so that it can actually get the best signal. So that's cool, I understand all about that. So the old dish basically sort of like moved itself around to give you the best signal. Um, however, I stripped all that down, if you remember, um, and just got the flat <laughs> version of it to mount on my roof. And that's been fine. So I figured when this came along, it's going to be better because it's bigger and they've designed it to be flat mounted. So surely, yeah, more power and stuff. So I'm interested in three things, really. I'm interested in the speed, as in internet connection speed of this. Um, then interested in its weight because you know, if it weighs more it's extra weight I've got to carry around traveling around in a vehicle I have to worry about weight and then the third thing I'm interested in is its power consumption as opposed to the gen 2 dish so obviously it comes with different power bricks and different connection cables and all that kind of stuff um, so we're going to first set it up exactly as it comes out of the box and do some tests uh, and then i've got a conversion kit to put it on 12 volts um so yeah we're gonna go through the whole thing in one video so stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and give it a like and a thumbs up and all that as well while you're here why not so we got a new power brick which i've obviously undone the wrong way I don't want to tear everything up any more than I've already done. So that's the power brick. What does that one say? Uh, that one says its output is 57 volts, 195 watts, but it is IP66 rated. Quite cool. Uh, IP66 is obviously its waterproof rating. This is the router that goes into there, like that, which is the UK power adapter goes in the other end of here. It's got a little groove on it, so it only goes in that way. Like these little uh, connections it's got, so it does seal. So the IP rating is good. And then you've got the usual thing, which is um, a rather long cable, which connects the router to the dish. I'm determined not to break any of these things. There we go. All right, so. It, this kind of looks like a standard ethernet cable um, or you know like a decent uh, category 6 e cable externally graded and that then just sort of like clicks in there can only go in one way and um, both ends of the cable are exactly the same so you can't get them wrong unlike uh, the other version of the dish they had version 2 where the cable was actually um, sort of proprietary either end rj45 connection um, and it just slots in the back of the dish there um, and seals up so it goes in click it in and then like i say with that rubber shroud it's sealed in place and that's it just to point out on the back there you've got two ethernet ports as well um, so like me i could connect it up to my router um, and have my router just see this as a WAN, uh, wide area network connection. So let's get it set up outside. After all, it is, uh, you know, weatherproofed. So give it some power and um, get set up. Now, there are no lights on there to say whether it's powered on or not. Now, through the beauty of the internet and, you know, Bluetooth technology, um, I can actually see how much power this is pulling. 
there, just looking at my app, I've put it into my uh, power station so I can see through my app how much power we're using. Um, so far I've seen 99 watts, 77 watts, 74 watts. Um, so yeah, right now on AC, um, you know, sort of like a 240 volt, um, it's plugged in and it is powered on. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes um, and then I'm going to go into the Starlink app um, and then we're going to see uh, how it's going to be set up. And hopefully it should recognize there we go so straight away it recognizes that it's booting up it recognizes that it's the uh, gen 3 router and dish um, yeah starlink is powering on entering starlink network uh, wi-fi isn't configured it just wants me to set it up so um, in all fairness right now i am not bothered about wi-fi um, no one else is around him in the middle of nowhere and which is the whole point of starlink um, so i just want to uh, get it set up and it's obviously then going to want to register me on an account um, so that I can start paying, uh, which is £85 a month, which is going to be what I'm going to do because I'm going to use it on the Roam package. And this is the reason why I've upgraded as well, is because they no longer make the Gen 2 dish back there. Um, so if you get a new Starlink Roam package, you're going to end up with one of these. And as someone who roams around a lot, I thought I'd upgrade to one of these. Um, 249 pounds i think it was to get this uh so yeah get it set up and see how good it is over the gen 2 dish over there all right so we are set up there so that's the gen 2 dish uh, this is all the gen 3 gubbins um you know uk power supply router and dish i've moved the dish over there a little bit just so it is in the middle of nowhere now nothing around it um, no trees or anything like that uh, so we can get the best possible signal and hopefully the best possible speed. So right now on the app, I'm looking at a sort of usage of around about 79 watts as being an average. Bear in mind, it's still booting up onto the network. So uh, yeah, getting online is taking longer than usual. But I did move it, so it probably didn't like the fact that I moved it mid kind of uh, setup. Um, but yeah, I've just got it on its kickstand, um, nothing else there. Um, and kind of facing south as well. So just say it's offline, it's gonna keep trying and connecting, I guess. Um, but it's a good test at this stage to see how much power it's using, still 79 watts. So just to make sure at the point where it's actually setting everything up, that it's not using more power than it would be if you were sort of downloading or whatever. Now there, no active subscription. Starlink is connected, but we've got no active subscription. Um, and that is because subscriptions are based on the dish. So the actual dish, not the router or anything other things there. So my subscription is currently stopped because uh, it's con well, it was connected to that Gen 2 dish. And obviously I want to use the Gen 3 dish. So it does mean now I've got to go away and set up a new subscription for the Gen 3 dish. So I'll come back after I've done that. Um, it's the same price, it's £85 a month, so there's no difference. Um, but you do have to have um, a connection to the internet uh, before it'll go anywhere, which is annoying because like I say, um, you've got Starlink right there, but you do need an existing internet connection uh, before it'll actually set anything up. So just bear that in mind. So it's now telling me I've got to move my Starlink around to get a better signal. So we better get on with that, haven't we? There you go, now it's saying it's aligned within a square it gives you, click done. So we're online, uh, it's downloaded an update. So wait until it's done the update. Um, I've subscribed again. So I've connected this new dish to my account and give it my details so it can take the usual monthly subscription. Um, says that there's no obstructions, but it's not been powered on enough yet to really kind of detect any obstructions. Um, so yeah, let's just do a quick speed test and see what it says. That'll do. 380 meg on the download. Uh, let's see what the upload is. 24, 22, 20, 18, 17, 16, 15. 15 and a half up and yeah, 334 down. I mean, that'll do. 
Um, the upload speed is what I'm interested in being a YouTuber and uploading videos and working remotely online, um, sort of voice calls, voice over IP, all that really depends on the upload. So that's what concerns me most really. So there we go, we can see that we are doing a regular speed test now on the speed test app, SpaceX Starlink. Um, I'm using um, a network connection, White Fiber Limited, which I'm presuming is on the Isle of Wight. Um, and that's given us sort of like a, a true network speed, if you like. So 188 meg down and 22 meg up, 23 meg up. Yeah, happy days with that one, 24 even. Like I said, it's the upload I'm most interested in. So let's just do another test just to get a few tests done just to see if it does get any better. 33 pings, pretty cool. Oh, there you go, so shut up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, that is obviously faster than most people get in a house <laughs> on internet connection. And uh, a ping of 33 is perfectly okay for uh, voice over IP, working remotely, that kind of thing. Um, 15, 16 up, again, perfectly okay. So yes, yeah, so that's us online and everything set up. Uh, one thing I will mention straight away, it's probably not going to come out on camera, but it's humming. It's making a really sort of high pitch hum. Um, the Gen 2 dish over there also made a hum. <laughs> um, obviously this is a bigger dish. It's making a bigger hum. Uh, but just goes to show what sort of power it's using. Uh, and speaking of power, so at maximum, I noticed it got to like 105, 106 watts. Um, now it's kind of like stabilized, like as you can see from there, uh, it's using around about 49 watts. So 50 watts, there you go. So that's it online. Um, my network's doing some updates and speed tests as well. So as you can see from that, um, that's pretty good. All right, so let's see how much a Gen 2 dish and mount weighs. That is four kilos exactly, I'm gonna call that. So Gen 3 dish, and there we go, 3.155. And then I thought I'd show you the size difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 2. So it's a little bit bigger, not a lot bigger, I'll move it over that way, maybe you can see it better that way. So yeah, pretty cool really. That it still fits in the space that I created um, originally for the, the Gen 2 dish to fit in there. Um, so yeah, quite good. So we've now done away with the Starlink router and power pack. Uh, so we're using the, still the Starlink cable. Starlink is still up on the roof there. Um, and the ethernet cable is going into this little uh, PoE, so power over ethernet injector. So this takes 12 volts in from my van. So 12 volts goes into here uh, and that then injects 50 volts, 47 volts or whatever, uh, through the ethernet cable into the dish. And then this connects to my LAN which is my little router there, which normally works off my mobile phone network, but then it's using Starlink now. And then we'll do some tests and comparisons on being powered by 12 volt via this um, power over an ethernet adapter, as opposed to using the original Starlink equipment. All right, so Starlink's now back online. So let's quickly do a speed test. This is the Starlink speed test. So this is just a, like I say, an internal network, I suppose, test on Starlink. So 200 meg down, 30 meg up, thereabouts, 29, 30 meg up. So let's go and do a speed test on there, just to confirm. Um, that is showing that we are on Starlink and um, we have kept the server the same on all these tests, so which is white fiber limited in cows. And let's just do a quick test. Obviously now this is Starlink Gen 3, uh, powered from 12 volts and just flat mounted on my roof. It's not particularly the best orientation it could possibly be. So yeah, 190 meg down, that'll do, and 20 meg up. Can't argue with that. 
certainly doable for what I need when I'm out and about. And like I said, the beauty about it is now is that I'm using one router, one Wi-Fi hotspot, everything connects to that. If it hasn't got an EE, you know, mobile network sim, I can just flick the switch onto this, wait a few minutes for Starlink to boot up, and then it'll use Starlink to then give my router an internet connection and everything carries on as before. So thanks for watching my video about the Gen 3 Starlink dish set up in my van on 12 volt and through my local router as well. So yeah, got it all done. Everything seems to be working perfectly well. Um, I'll report back in a few months, I guess, about, um, yeah, maybe I'll try some in motion testing, all that kind of stuff, just to see what it's like. But yeah, quite happy about that and uh, quite happy about the size, the way it fits and the power it's drawing in that. So yeah, really pleased with that. If you've got any questions, obviously ask in the comments section down below and uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share the video and um, yeah, if you're not already subscribed for more techie stuff like this. Take care folks, see you again, bye.